Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation Certification Tutorials. We are getting started with Chapter 1 and as a part of the Chapter 1, which is Fundamentals of Testing, we shall be talking about the very first topic of this chapter today, that is what is testing. And as part of this particular segment, we shall cover more about the basic introduction to what is testing. Well, in order to talk about the fundamental of testing concepts, testing is there from a long time. It's just that like we did not recognize it probably much earlier, but it's just that it was a part of our day to day life activities. In fact, when you do something, you do taste it. Right. For example, when you're cooking something new, you would love to make a taste of it to make sure that it is tasting as you expected or not. And exactly that particular way of concept is being applied into the segment of any product or any applications testing. So being a test engineer, our responsibilities are to validate whether a product is working as expected or not. Now here I'm using the word product. It does not mean that it is only limited to an appliances or any hardcore product which you might be using your day-to-day -day world we are also talking about any such application or software which we build today right so a bit history of what testing is and how does it come into the market of course initially we did not have anyone called as test engineers but of course testing is existed long back when the development was done by the developers and the developers were also responsible to do testing too but of course, due to the you know same person performing these activities that led to a lot of defect leakage. And it's a very common understanding right at the beginning, which I would like to share with you, that we understood based on the analysis of this, that why are we leaking so many defects to the market? We understood that it's a very, hum very common human tendency and my psychology that you cannot find all your mistakes. Now, there are a few things about human psychology which are very simple and straightforward to understand. Number one, human is error prone, which you will agree to it. Second, that human cannot find all their mistakes. Of course, they can find some of them, but not all the mistakes what they make every single day or in every single work. And third, humans are equally good at finding mistakes in somebody else's work. Now, that could be a little funny to talk about, but I think I'm pretty much making sense to all of you. Now, that's where we thought testing, let it happen. Of course, it has to happen. We cannot excuse it, but let, let's have someone else to do it. Even if I related this to your graduation examination, and I'm, I'm not sure how many of you really got some time to revise your paper before submission, but once you know the teacher looked at it, uh, they could very well find out the mistake. No matter how many times you revise it before submission, you were not capable of finding all your mistakes. Now that certainly justifies that what's the need of being a tester and at the same time, what's the need of having someone else as a test engineer, not the person who developed it. So many people assume that, hey, that sounds a very simple thing. And can anybody just do that? Answer is no, not at all. Testing is just not limited to writing test cases and executions. Many people think about that testing is just a set of activity which involves writing test cases and executing them. Another misconception about testing is that testing focuses entirely on the verifying the test object, whereas it's not just dynamic. That means it's just not about interacting with the system and performing the test. It also deals with statically reviewing the work products which we write. So the journey of testing starts right from the requirement gathering and we as a tester get involved in reviewing the requirements. In other words, we are actually understanding the requirement for writing our test cases. But as a return of that or as a byproduct, we do find anomalies in the written documentations too. Similarly, a tester do get involved in design review, does get involved in the test case review, test plan review, project plan review, code review today, and everywhere, no matter what kind of artifact, what kind of work product we are talking about, we do have a review happening for such products which are critical to have any anomalies at the beginning of the day. Also, testing is not only the technical activity, it also needs to be properly planned, managed, estimated, monitored, and controlled, which of course is a responsibility of the manager and the management takes care of it. But uh, testing is just not limited to writing test cases 
and executing them. So people who are thinking at this point of time that, hey, testing can be done by anyone, or if there is someone who told you that testing is the most easiest job in technology and someone who doesn't have anything to do can become a tester, let me tell you, it's not that simple. You need to learn things, you need to understand things, and need to make things happen according to the expectation. And for that, you need skills and technical knowledge. Well, the next topic, importantly, what we are talking about was test objectives. That means what are the key objectives of testing as a part of the process? And of course, many people think that testing is mainly from the perspective of validating the product, finding the defects, meeting the expected requirement, meeting the user needs. And sometimes they do get confused or sometimes they do conclude things together, stating that is it uh, the combination of all the things? And answer is absolutely yes. Testing has multiple objectives and a tester is responsible to meet all of them. But yeah, there will be some of the things which may not be applicable to your product, depending on your organization, depending on your product characteristics or maybe your project characteristics. So it is very important to just keep those things in mind, which your project or product or organization deals with. But in a nutshell, all these on the screen are basically your key objectives of testing. And being a test engineer, you are responsible to meet them. So the objectives include mainly, that is the evaluation of the work products. The journey starts right from there as we talk about different work products being written. Now work product here are documentations, including the diagrams, like uh, you can say business models or flowcharts, algorithms, every single thing is a work product for me to get evaluated. So we testers are responsible to review them and raise any kind of anomalies and queries and doubts or clarification related to that. Second, triggering the failures and finding defects. Of course, uh, our in overall intention and objective is to conduct as many failures as possible as a part of the life cycle or test activities and to make sure that we identify the potential defects and let the developer know about it so that they can fix it. Of course, when we talk about ensuring required coverage of a test object, object which means writing the number of test cases which are desirable to cover the required expectation has to be written. So the coverage measurement is equally important. It's not that for a particular requirement, I can just write few test cases, whatever I think like, and that would be enough. Now, you need to write appropriate number of test cases, which gives you the required coverage for that particular functionality or feature or test object. Reducing the level of risk of inadequate software quality. Now, of course, the risk also is getting covered. And again, these words will be discussed in detail in chapter five. So just stay calm and we will be talking about it in more detail. But as a part of testing, our responsibility is also to reduce the level of risk because sometimes we just can't blindly mitigate a risk. Also verifying whether specified requirement have been fulfilled, which is key expectation of testing. We assure that the user needs and expectations are met. Verifying what a test object complies with contractual, legal, and regulatory requirement. Uh, as this is what I was referring to when I said that it's not necessary every organization, every single product has to go through the standards, the contracts, or legal requirements. But there are many products in the market today. For example, if you talk about embedded systems, you talk about automotive, aviation, and banking, they do get involved with many standards, legals, and uh, other contractual requirements. Of course, contractual could be for anyone, but uh, legal and uh, standards are specifically driven by some of the products. Also verifying that test object uh, complies with that and then providing information to stakeholder to allow them to make inform, uh, make informed decisions. That means our key responsibility is to consistently let other stakeholders know that what are we doing at this point of time? How are we progressing so that they can make appropriate decisions about the progress and releases? Building confidence in the product quality, which is of course one of our key responsibility. If we as a tester do not have the confidence of releasing the product to the market, then we cannot let the organization do that. So as a tester, until unless you have the confidence of you know, letting the product go into the market, Nobody else would do that. So your sign off is very important. It's just like until unless as a ground staff, you don't show a thumbs up to the pilot, the pilot cannot move the aircraft. So that's your value at this point of time. And also validating whether the test object is complete and works as expected by the stakeholder. So completeness check should also be performed. That means uh, some of the requirements can be under tested or some of the requirements may be missed out 
with, uh, as a part of the testing. So we must keep assuring at every single point that all our requirements have been covered, completed, and they are behaving as per the stakeholder needs. Well, another important thing here we're talking about is testing and debugging. Quite often people think a lot different about testing and debugging. And uh, sometimes people who are not from the testing background, they think testing and debugging are almost similar. Why? Because testing is all about finding defects and debugging as a term also says bugs, de debug. So it's about removing defects. So isn't that testing and debugging are somewhat or almost similar? And that's where testing team wants to, or ISTQB wants you to learn about this at this point of time, that testing and debugging are not same. Testing and debugging are different. A testing team or test engineer is someone who is responsible only to find defects. They don't have any kind of co contribution in terms of fixing a defect. Whereas debugging is something as a process which deals with analyzing the defect being reported, getting into the root cause of that, because it's not necessary what you see is only the problem. Sometimes there could be something else as an element contributing to the failure. So a developer has to go through the root cause analysis to find out the exact reason behind that failure or the defect and then fix it. So fixing that is certainly not something which just, you know, can be done by a test engineer. So in key differences, testing is only responsible for finding out a defect or finding a defect, whereas debugging deals with uh, the analysis of the defect. That means understanding what is the defect all about, getting into the root cause analysis, finding the root cause, and another important thing is fixing the defect. So it's very, very crucial that we understand the difference between this. So testing and debugging are separate activities and uh, thus deal with important things which are related to uh, performing these activities. So another important question what I quite often, quite often hear from people is that, hey, when it comes to automation testing, do we call it as testing the script or debugging the script? So sometimes is it possible that we can also do debugging? Answer is, of course, yes. It's not about the role or the designation in your organization. It's about the process, right? The process says what exactly you are doing. So if you are just finding defects, you are doing testing, no matter who you are. A developer also does testing in terms of unit testing. A tester also performs testing when it comes to system testing. When it comes to code, a developer performs debugging. We don't do anything, but when it comes to automation script, which we have written, so we are the developer of the cup, right? In that context, we are the people who are also responsible to fix our automation script ourselves. And that time when we are analyzing the script and fixing any kind of syntax errors, or any kind of other anomalies in the script, we call it as debugging. So execution is called as automation testing, but fixing the script is debugging. So in that regards, it's just not limited to developer. It can be done by tester also, given that they are responsible for writing and maintaining automation tests. So I think that was all we had from this particular tutorial team and you have got a good understanding of the same. Should you have anything else, we can talk if you can just let me know by dropping a comment. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries, answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.